And good morning. morning. On behalf of Pastor Voth and myself, it's good to be back. We missed you. Did you miss us? Thank you. It's always good to feel welcome home. A few announcements this morning. If you want to follow along in your uh, bulletin, they're at the back. I'm going to highlight the fact that the church photo directory is uh, underway. We're having sign-ups of all the members, and the sessions start this week on, is it Tuesday? Thursday, Thursday and Friday. So if you haven't yet signed up online, you can do that by uh, going onto our church webpage and looking at your calendar and looking at what's available, or you can do it after the service today. Gordon and Marion will be there to help you. Also, we have had a garage sale or a rummage sale going on since last Thursday. Today is the conclusion of it. Opens at noon and closes at 3. After, at 3 o'clock, we need lots of help, lots of volunteers to kind of assemble things and gather things and, and get that fellowship hall ready for a new week of the ICCC. So if you are available this afternoon at 3 o'clock for a while, we could sure use your help. Other announcements you can read for yourself. Let's begin the worship this morning with the song, Firm Foundation.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our soul waits for the Lord. For our heart is glad in him. Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us. Loving God, we confess our alienation from you, both by nature and by choice. Help us to know and believe how much you love us. Let us abide in your love, even as you abide in us always. Heal us with forgiveness for Jesus' sake. Our dear Heavenly Father in mercy has given the Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll read responsibly the intro. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. He gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those whose hope is in his steadfast love. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God on the lyre. O Lord, who by your promise of a child was Abraham's shield and great reward. O Christ, who inspired the faith of your saints of old. O Lord, who richly cares and provides for all your children. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, it is by your grace that we live as your people who offer acceptable service. Grant that we may walk by faith and not by sight in the way that leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis 15, 1 through 6. After these, things, the word of, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision. Fear not, Abraham, I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abraham said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abraham said, Behold, you have given me no offspring, and a member of my household will be my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir. Your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought him outside and said, Look toward heaven and number the stars. If you are able to count them, then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord, and he counted it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. God. The epistle is from Hebrews chapter 11. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their condemnation. But faith we understand that the universe was created by the word and of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. By faith Abel offered to God a more acceptable sacrifice than Cain through which he was commended as righteous, God commending him by accepting his gifts. And through his faith, though he died, he still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken up so that he should not see death. And he was not found because God had taken him. Now before he was taken, he was commended as having pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. By faith, Noah, being warned by God concerning events as yet unseen, in reverent fear, constructed an ark for the saving of his household. By this, he condemned the word, world and became an heir of the righteousness, 
that comes by faith. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise. For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age, since she, was considered, since she considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one man, and him as good as dead, were born descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. Those all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land for, from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared for them a city. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 12th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor about your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap, they have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a single hour to his span of life? If then you are not able to do as small a thing as that, why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not seek what you are to eat and what you are to drink, nor be worried. 
For all the nations of the world seek after these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be added to you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give to the needy. Provide yourselves with money bags that do not grow old, with a treasure in the heavens that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Stay dressed for action and keep your lamps burning, and be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds awake when he comes. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. If he comes in the second watch or in the third and finds them awake, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. This is the gospel of the Lord. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, anxiety runs strong in my family in much the same way that the Force runs strong in the Skywalker family. 
I have it. My mother has it. Her father and his mother before him had it. At least one of my children has it. And much of anxiety as I have come to see it in my life really comes as a result of fear. For me, it's a fear of not being able to provide for all of their needs, for their wants, and yes, for even some of their greeds. I want to give my family everything they want when they want it. And trying to say no to them is very hard. Now, lest this sermon become about me, I think that Christ would say the same thing, that our anxiety is caused by fear. Fear from a lack of trust. Our gospel reading today begins with some good old-fashioned, hard-hitting law on the lips of Jesus. Do not be anxious about your life. Easier said than done, I think, for most of us. I don't believe I'm the only one in this sanctuary that has not had anxiety over finances, over health concerns, over children, over aging parents, over siblings, and the like. For many of us, even the shootings of this last weekend have caused fear and anxiety for us about maybe going out to places like the grocery store or to school. Compound those anxieties with the new how good do I look on social media 365? And life can be kind of become one big anxiety and worry nightmare that will not end. Do I have the right clothes? Am I eating the right foods for the keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, Atkins, Mediterranean diet? How's my 401k doing? Am I going to have enough in retirement? Will I have enough saved for retirement? How am I going to pay for college? How am I going to afford the house payments? How do I afford the repairs for the house and the repairs for the car? We even heard in the Old Testament lesson about Abraham having fear over what would happen to this promise that God had given to him of an heir, a child who was supposed to pass his earthly possessions on to. There are so many things in this world to worry about and to stress over. Enough things that can cause us anxiety. And as I said, it is all based on the sin of fear born from a lack of trust. But listen again to Jesus, because he actually isn't laying down the good old law, but he's saying words of comfort to those who are feared, to the fear-filled soul. Do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat, nor your body, what you will put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn. Yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Remember your catechism? I believe that God has made me and all creatures. That he has given me my body and soul, eyes, ears, and all my members, my reason and all my senses, and still takes care of them. He also gives me clothing and shoes, food and drink, house and home, wife and children, land, animals, and all that I have. He richly and daily provides me with all that I need to support this body and life. He defends me against all danger and guards and protects me against all evil. All this he does out of fatherly, divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me. It's your father's good pleasure to give you clothing, shoes, food, drink, shelter, family, employment, everything, every day, he gives to you gladly so that you might live. Remember, in the beginning, God created everything that exists, and he provided for them, and continued to provide for everything that they needed. Even for insignificant things, Jesus says, like ravens and lilies, like grass and slugs, mosquitoes and platypus, Venus flytrap and tulips, God provides all that they need to this very day. 
even though sin has corrupted and destroyed the perfection with which he created, when mosquitoes did not require your blood sacrifice. Of how much more valuable are you than the birds? If God clothes the grass which is alive in the field today and tomorrow thrown into the oven, how much more is he going to care for you, oh you of little faith? It's as St. Paul writes to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Indeed, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also graciously give us all things along with him? God has not spared his own son, Jesus, but he gave him up into death on the cross for all of us. Perfect love casts out fear. And this is how God's love for us was revealed. God has sent his only begotten son into the world so that we may live through him. This is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. It's out of fatherly divine goodness and mercy, without any merit or worthiness in me, that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Yes, we have fears and anxieties over many earthly things. But God in Christ Jesus has taken on the greatest thing that threatens our life, our sin. Jesus is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. All your sins have been covered in Christ, hidden eternally from God's sight, so that you do not have to fear death, but you have the comfort of forgiveness, the forgiveness of all of your sins. And where there is forgiveness of sins, there is life and salvation. In Christ Jesus, God has given to us the kingdom, his salvation. And yet his graciousness does not end there. Our Holy Gospel today ends with this most peculiar parable about the kingdom. Christ tells us, Be like men who are waiting for their master to come home from the wedding feast, so that they may open the door to him at once when he comes and knocks. Truly, I say to you, he will dress himself for service and have them recline at table, and he will come and serve them. Can you imagine something like that? It's inconceivable, really. The master of the house, the one who the servants are to wait on, having come back from a wedding feast, tells his servants, don't wait on me. Sit down. I will wait on you. I will serve you. It's an unbelievable idea. No earthly master would ever do such a thing. But your Christ, your Lord, your master does exactly this. Christ left heaven to come serve you. Christ has dressed himself for service by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men, by being bodied and blooded. And having dressed himself for service, Christ then institutes the particular look to his service. It's at his table where he is host and feast. This is one of the great mysteries of the Lord's Supper. That Christ himself comes as the host. The one who gives to us this feast according to his institution and at the same time is a feast as we eat of his body and drink of his blood. And in this feast, he gives us exactly what he's promised. The forgiveness of our sins. So that when we gather at his table, here in his house, we're gathered around him. With the result that we who are being found watchful, who are dressed in our baptism with faith burning in us by the Holy Spirit, are truly blessed. In this world, we are still going to have fears and anxiety. That's the result of sin that inhabits our being. And yet, in Christ, we are forgiven. 
It's this constant battle that we face of being simultaneously justified and sinner. Sinner and saint. But that's why we gather around Christ's word and sacraments. He's promised to be with us. To prick our conscience regarding sin and to comfort us with the good news that in him we are forgiven of all of our sins, including anxiety and worry and fear. Christ has promised that he is going to care for us in our body by providing us with food, clothing, family, and home. But he also cares for us of soul by providing us a meal in his sacrament, clothing us with his righteousness and holy baptism, providing us with a family of brothers and sisters in Kim. And he gives to us an eternal home, his kingdom, that comes with him and the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. So fear not, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We stand as we continue by confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified. pray together in Christ Jesus for all people according to their needs. Loving God, grant us the freedom to let anxiety be. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant us eyes that see and hearts that appreciate your grace in calling people out of the nothing of darkness into the kingdom of your beloved Son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant us wise and faithful pastors who speak your truth and love and your love and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant us civil leaders in every society that serve for the good of all people. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant healing to the sick and all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those of our church family as listed in the bulletin. Remembering today, Jay DePaulo, Jim Matson. Stacy Lemke, the daughter-in-law of Bill and Wanda, and Edward Croft, the uncle of Adam Drake. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant us all the good that you have prepared for us today in the Holy Supper of Jesus' body and blood. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, grant us together with all your saints life eternal in your kingdom, which has no end. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated as we gather our offerings.
We stand for the service of the sacrament. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who, having created all things, took on human flesh and was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sion, heaven and earth are full of our Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. See you. 
Thank you. 